Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Uh, so before I start, first kill and jawbreakers forever. Getting to people all <coughs> over the world. Um, so I love, this is my favorite part of crowdfunding is when people send in pictures of my books with the rest of the books in their collections. Um, it's a huge honor to have my books on people's shelves. I absolutely love that. So thanks for sending this stuff in. I always keep these. <laughs> like... I don't know what I'm going to be 80 and I'm going to be like, eh. I don't know. I don't know. I just, it's, I get very uh, uh, appreciative. Oh, by the way, they have that Star Wars skeleton crew and it's getting good reviews from critics, but also regular Joes. So um, this is what I predict. After saying that it looks woke and terrible and saying nobody asked for this, like women, birthday party clowns, Wait at the finish line and pick the winners. So, uh, just like they did with Barbie, just like they're doing with Wicked. No, oh, I'll bet you're surprised I lock Wicked. Well, no, <laughs> not really, <laughs> because this is what you do. You wait a week and a half to see how it's doing, and then you bravely make your point. They're a brave heart. Um, but uh, so, so now they're going to be like, I gave it a soul. And you know what? I locked it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so um, it's, it, it gets tiresome when people are like, Zach, you changed. Why? I've literally explained this 50 times at this point. For about five years, I had <coughs> all these late books. And it was all I thought about. It was the first thing I thought about when I woke up all day long. And now I'm catching up. So now I have free time. So now I can go to the movies. I can watch movies. I can play video games. I can buy a VR headset and get mildly nauseous. Um, and what's happening is all these people I trusted, where if they said something was bad, I was like, well, thanks. And I would avoid it. I go check it out. And most of these things... Uh, are good and they said things are bad not because they're bad but because they have a narrative so they have like all these weird gay feuds like ah oh, you can't like gladiator 2 because pedro pascal is in it and five years ago he didn't put his career on the line to save uh gina carano even though bill burr basically did nothing happened to him <coughs> but it didn't save her and <coughs> And yes, I know he's not the lead, but Pedro Pascal isn't really the lead of The Mandalorian either because he's barely ever in the suit. Um, but anyway, so I was like, I trusted these guys. They're not trustworthy. This is a huge fucking problem. You know that thing I say about journalists where I say your whole job is to not be corrupt? As a critic, your entire job is to be trustworthy. When you fake reviews, when you partially fake reviews, when you review a movie before you see it and then you just go see it as a technicality, I have a huge fucking problem with that. And unfortunately, I'm getting signs, not as bad, but I'm getting signs of it in comics. In that I will go check out something that I've been told is just the worst thing ever and then I'm like... Either like, this is okay, or this has some serious flaws, but it's also interesting. So this is the uh, Detective Comics. I read the last two issues of Ram V's uh, run, which I was told was terrible. All of it was terrible. It started terrible. It, w it went on forever and it ended terrible. And I read the last two issues, and uh, it was good. Great art by... Um, uh, Guillaume Amash, and uh, I didn't understand everything, but what I saw looked to be a complicated story that took a while to set up, that was done sincerely and had original characters and <coughs> an original take on an unoriginal take, in that for the last, I mean, really Scott Snyder did this, where like every Batman story has to be about his relationship with Gotham as if Gotham is like a person 
And it can't just be like, man, this motherfucker won't stop robbing banks. I gotta stop this motherfucker. This guy loves robbing banks. Like, it always has to be, like, Gotham is his lady, <laughs> like, type of thing. So, with this, the ultimate take was, I mean, look, come on, look at that art. The whole run was terrible. No, it wasn't. I didn't read the entire thing, but I read the last two issues, and they were good. Um, uh, so, at the end, it basically says, like, um, yeah, Gotham has a dark side, and I just got to deal with that and still love it. There's a great line from uh, the recent Crow movie. I don't remember the exact words, but Shelly is basically telling Eric, she's like, when it gets difficult to love me, keep loving me. And that's a really good line. I wish I remembered it word for word. So anyway, um, uh, making the rounds right now is... Um, Two pages from the most recent issue of Detective Comics. And one of the uh, huge problems with the creeping birthday party clownization of comics reviews is that they will focus on the least important thing when there's much more stuff. <laughs> so um, there's two issues so far. Uh, the first one from Tom Taylor I did not like. It was very Tom Taylor. It was a lot of writing backwards from the punchline. Uh, basically, flashbacks to Thomas Wayne. And he uh, there's an abusive boyfriend. Uh, the girlfriend's pregnant. They go to the hospital. And then he saves the boyfriend's life. And, like, everyone he talks to is like, You should have let him die. And not, like, hinting about it. But, like, four different people say that. That's not that's not good writing. And also, it's like, um, it, it, they didn't really establish, they're like, oh, she's got a, a bruise on her cheek. It's like, wait, you're going to murder people for that? You don't just, like, call the police and say, hi, I'm a doctor. I just saved this guy's life, but I'm pretty sure he beats his girlfriend. Like, that's the whole story. Yeah, and even like with this dialogue, it's like your subconscious is not being very sub there. It's like, what? It's like a 78 year old man. And this would have been like 40 years ago. Like, And then even like uh, Martha is talking about like sleep hygiene. Um, and I'm like, nobody talked like that. That would have been in like the freaking. If Batman is pushing 50 right now, he's basically my age. So this would have taken place like during the 80s. She's like, you have very poor sleep hygiene. Um, but, uh, oh, and one other thing. Um, I heard some people being surprised like, oh, Mikhail Janin's uh, gotten better. He's gotten better because and the next uh, issue illustrates it a lot better. So he always traced 3D models, like basically always. Since Grayson through his run on Batman with Tom King. He is still tracing models, but he's doing it a lot more artfully in that he's um, not just expressly uh, just copying the lines. I mean, this is clearly a filter on a photograph, but um, especially there's some scenes with Robin and it's like he couldn't find a good 3D model for Robin. So he just drew Robin and uh, Robin looks different than all of the men. Okay, so... Yeah, so this is the scene right here. So the main way you notice um, that somebody's using 3D models is there's this, from panel to panel, all of the proportions will be consistent, where that doesn't really happen. But um, so you got a hand-drawn Robin, and then all the thugs are using 3D models, but a lot of, you know, actual just inking over and, and making it not so obvious. It used to be really obvious. So anyway, the thing that's making the rounds right now is this is a storyline where, um, that's, that's the other thing. This, like I said, this birthday party clownization of comics YouTube is one of, one of the constant tricks of birthday party clowns is they will talk about everything as if it's the stupidest thing ever. It's like, have you heard of this place, Taco Bell? Most of them don't even have bells. 
So it's like tacos. It's like Mexican food. But like, I'm pretty sure the person was Filipino. And like, and, and so you just say everything like it's the worst thing ever. And you're like, you just said nothing bad. But they like they have this just really oily way of describing everything. So like you hear people talk about this. It's like Bruce is injured. It's like okay, he's he's injured. He's getting older. Why are you doing that voice? Like this is just a story. These are just story elements. It's like <laughs> like they always have to like just ugh, ugh, ice cream cones. Well, it sounds like you don't like them. I didn't say that. It's like, why are you like this? But anyway, he's older. He's accumulating injuries. He doesn't have time to heal. And he's given an offer uh, to have um, a therapy that will reverse aging. Um, and he's conflicted about that because it's being offered to him because he's rich. It's expensive. So he's like, only rich people get this. He's also dealing with a bunch of kids being murdered. So, Tom Taylor, second issue is written a lot better than the first one. He's basically, like a writer, juxtaposing things. Like, the tragedy of people dying in their youth. With the irony of rich people being to live, not forever, but a lot longer. If you wonder why all those billionaires... The only thing they can't do... like. You can, all these politicians and billionaires are living to be a hundred. It's it's the eyelids. At some point, the eyelids like stop adhering to the eyes. So I always think like I could put an M and M up there. Like there's oh they just hang. Um, uh, but at, for some reason they can't solve that yet. Um, but so he's a little conflicted. So he goes to talk to Superman about it to get some perspective. And this is making the rounds just like, look at the woke, woke, tart, woke, he's woke. It's like, if you read the fucking issue and the ones before it, it is an intelligent conversation between two friends who trust each other about a complicated situation. Or let's say nuanced, more than complicated. Now, one of the things that I want to point out here is the subtle rebrand that is unintentional but um, striking. So woke generally means liberal, right? And anti-woke means conservative, Republican. So you're branding woke as intelligent, thoughtful, maintains friendships, trusts his friends, interested in new technologies, but willing to discuss the, um, you know, Pluses and minuses of it. So that's what you're branding as woke. Meanwhile, you're branding anti-woke as middle-aged Republicans who just look for things to complain about like a bunch of crybabies. Was that your intent? Because I don't think that it was. Um, so, uh, you know, basically they have a... And, and they do not they do not talk about white privilege. He says, your wealth and privilege already ensure you have a greater life expectancy. The privilege is about money, but it's also about just kind of generally living in a Western country. Um, and it's a thoughtful conversation. And that's woke, epic, woke meltdown. And God damn, just, just stop. You sound so fucking stupid. Um, and it's like just the most trash way. It's like, it gets clicks. Yes, acting like a shithead absolutely does get you clicks. Um, and they even make some good points. He's basically like, well, you have like, you know, kind of a privilege where you're Superman. And you can't die. He's like, yeah, but I've already died once. And, you know, uh, he says, the nature of the work means my natural longevity may not come into it. I've already died more than once. So... One thing I like is he... Uh, oh, so this is a great illustration, no pun intended, of how I know that this is 3D models because this pose and that pose and that pose are the exact same pose uh, from... Well, these, these two are just slightly different camera angles. 
So again, when you see that absolute, you know, consistency of the proportion of the shoulder to the elbow to the wrist, stuff like that. Even very good artists, they don't do that because they'll, they do, you know, squash and stretch. They will exaggerate things to make a point. If you want to talk about how, you know, he's fragile, you might give him thick musculature in his torso, but have him kind of hunched over. You might like really pump up his thighs, but give him really weak ankles to make him look kind of precarious. But this is just a 3D model with, you know, hero proportions. So that's what he uses. So um, he goes and takes, you know, the, uh, the therapy. And it's kind of a good point where he's like, um, he's got to pretend just to be the rich guy who just has skiing accidents. But then they really put him through. They really put him through a freaking crucible to the point where it's like, wait, you're just giving this therapy to the healthiest people who, if they weren't Batman, were probably going to live a long time anyway. Like, he runs 10 miles on a treadmill. I believe at an angle. No, it's it's a Dutch angle of the, of the, uh, of the uh, um, panel. But uh, one of the things I like is he goes to test it out. And um, this is a subject that's uh, very, very um, interesting to me because I'm really getting into uh, peptides, supplements. And there's this peptide BPC-157. It's the Wolverine protocol, although technically the Wolverine protocol is that plus TB-500, something like that. And there's a lot of testimonials. There actually are some studies. Um, uh, and... Um, the way he describes it is the way people describe when they're on BPC-157. He doesn't say, oh my gosh, it's like I'm 25 again. He says, everything feels a little bit easier. Muscles are looser. The small aches, the constant reminder of past injuries aren't as pronounced. Knee still has some pain, but it's definitely improved. This literally 100% sounds like when people talk about taking BPC-157, it doesn't turn you into Superman or Batman, but it does, you know, it uh, reduces inflammation and it uh, uh, healing, increases healing, and also it's derived from gastric juices. <laughs> I'm very well versed in this. Um, and uh, so you can take it as a pill because it's made from gastric juices. So it goes into the stomach. It's like, what's up? <laughs> that's just a family reunion to it so it doesn't you know it, it, you can inject it but um uh, you can also just take the pills and get a uh, good effect so it's interesting that you do a comic book story but it, it feels like it's like tom do you have some knee pain that's gotten better recently gotten uh went to the little peptide shop canadian pharmacy type situation well you can get it prescribed um uh, but um anyway so uh yeah, so the problem with the birthday party clownization of comics YouTube is you're going to miss good things because it doesn't fit your narrative. You're going to talk about things that are okay as if they're the worst things because they're the easy clickbait things. Oh my God, Superman said privilege. Let's just say that he said white privilege. And it's just like, bruh, come on, stop. <laughs> just, just, just stop. Um, uh, stop being just, it, it, like I said, it's the branding. You're now branding thoughtful, intelligent, good friends, interested in technology. You're branding that as woke. And you're branding anti-woke as middle-aged men who comb through things to find something that proves their narrative. And then they basically go tattle. You guys, you guys. This is this is white priv they they said white guilt white privilege no they didn't they said wealth and privilege and it was clearly heavily on the wealth part anyway thanks for watching bye